Okay. Hello guys, good morning. My name is AJ Ade, and the topic that I'll be presenting to you about is my law research over the past few years. And I said, I mean, weeks, not years. So my first thing that I'm going to be sharing with you today is my two quotes that really have a lot to do with my study. The first one is actually my senior quote, and it is by Michelangelo, and it says, I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. This kind of pertains to my study because when a lawyer or a prosecutor sees justice in the situation, then they essentially carve until they set it free. The second one is, quote, this is the strange way of the world, that people who simply want to love are forced to become warriors by anonymous. So like me, someone that simply wants to see justice in the world is forced to, well, not necessarily forced, but wants to fight for it. So those are both really important, not just in my life, but in my ISM studies as well. Um, sorry. So uh, the order of presentation today is famous lawyers and then famous contemporary legal court cases. These are two things that I wanted to highlight today because I feel like they really encompass the studies of research that I've been doing over the past few weeks. So the famous lawyers, I chose two to research that I really enjoy. And the famous contemporary legal cases are kind of just fun things that have been going on that um, involves lawyers, which is obviously what I'm doing. So the first one that we're going to start with is famous lawyers. So I handpicked these out of the people that I feel like really brought. Um, they kind of changed the trajectory of justice in terms of how unconventional the people are in, um, as compared to the other people in their work. So the first one that I chose is none other than um, President Barack Obama. Did you guys know that he was a lawyer? Because apparently some people did not. Now, don't get me wrong, he did attend Harvard University for law, but he first started off at Occidental College for his undergrad, freshman and sophomore year, did his junior and senior year at Columbia University, and then did his postgraduate studies at Harvard Law so that he could um, gain more of a sense of professional law. He ended up being a civil rights lawyer, which is one of the biggest things that I feel is the most important because that is what I actually wanted to delve into with my law research but I kind of changed that and we'll be discussing that later on in this presentation. The biggest quote that he said that was really important for his research and his study was, I just can't get things, oh man, <laughs> I just can't get things done here without a law degree. And that's important because, um, I mean, yeah, like he's the president now and he has, he's just coming off of, like this is his last week of presidency before the inauguration in January. So he can't get things done without a law degree. That was kind of the philosophy that I wanted to implement to my um, research. So that ended up being the first research assessment. And um, I just think that's really important because, I mean, he went from just some guy to being a lawyer. Um, and he was born in America, Hawaii. <laughs> some background information. So the big concept with that is without a law degree, Barack Obama could not be where he is today in his last week from eight years of presidency. So clearly his law degree helped him, like, propel himself. Um, the second one that we'll be um, discussing today is my second research assessment, which is Judge Louis Brandeis. So he was a Jewish Supreme Court justice post-World War I. That is very important, I mean, World War II. That is very important because there is a lot of anti-Semitic, you know, feelings floating around, not just America, but the entire world, especially in Germany. So the fact that he was a Jewish Supreme Court justice really shows that, I mean, that was kind of the first strings of just, um, what's the word? That was one of the first strings of revolution. Yeah, it's revolutionary. So that he imposed um, Jewish and egalitarian ideal ideals. Egalitarian means equality. So not just for men and women, but for J the Jewish and the non-Jewish, any race, any gender. And so that um, I personally chose this because over the summer I did research and service at Brandeis University. And one of the biggest things that they reinforced is equality. No matter who you are, your gender, your race, or anything, even when I was filling out my college applications for them, they have a little drop down button for select gender, she, her, they, them, he, him, all of that. So that's just something that Louis Brandeis' impact had on America. This is important because this is just as important as Barack Obama being the first black president or Hillary Clinton potentially being the first female president. Um, this is Louis Brandeis being the first Jewish Supreme Court justice, which is very important to our entire nation. So the big concept in this is with law, Louis Brandeis changed the trajectory of duties for the Supreme Court justice. He really set the bar pretty high. 
Um, I mean, the people following him after that may have kind of staggered in terms of how much justice they wanted to implement with their nation, like um, Scalia, the late Scalia, but um, Judge Lee Brandeis really helped set the bar high. So the second thing that I'm going to be discussing today are two famous contemporary legal cases. These are two very important things. Well, I certainly think that they're important. Um, they're my third and fourth research assessment, so I hope you guys enjoy those. So the first one is marijuana legalization. That is a very important thing in our um, society nowadays, and it has been for the past decade. It's kind of a push and pull war within our Supreme Court. A big chunk of them says, yes, let us legalize marijuana for medicinal purposes and for just the fact that it's not quite considered a drug as, as heroin would be or as cocaine would be. And another chunk of them say, yes, it is a drug, a hallucinogen, if you will, and it is something that isn't quite normal. Like, you wouldn't just take marijuana and then go to your job or something. And so this focuses on healthcare law, which is, again, I said I wanted to do civil rights law, but since this kind of meshes into what I was previously wanting to study in ISM, healthcare law is, like, those are the type of lawyers that take care of this particular, um, this particular research. Um, so they, um, Barack Obama and the Department of Justice are partnering up to help kind of eradicate the whole problem that revolves around this, and they're expected to, they're subject to states' rights. So what they're kind of leaning towards is expected prosecution of those that sell marijuana within the states. Um, I know that you guys have probably heard that Colorado um, allows the use of marijuana, and even when I was in Boston this past summer studying at Brandeis University, they opened the first medicinal marijuana um, shop down the street from where I was staying on campus. So a lot of states are kind of leaning more t in the north more towards, yes, let's legalize marijuana, but a lot in the south won't budge. My, the big concept with this is legalization of marijuana is an important contemporary legal court case in America today. And my last research assignment is hashtag Save Nelly. I don't know if you've heard of this, but if you have a Twitter, you probably have. Um, the famous pop singer from 2000s named Nelly, he ended up having a, um, a huge tax debt owed to the IRS. And so he owed a tax lien. If you don't know what that is, a lien is whenever somebody refuses to pay their IRS tax debt for whatever reason. And so after that, he ended up owing $2.4 million to the IRS. I don't know what he was doing that he had to owe $2.4 million, but that is a lot of money, even for somebody who was a big pop star in the early 2000s. So whenever the fans heard of this, they immediately took action. I mean, I did too. What they ended up doing was they streamed his um, famous song, Hot in Here, with two R's, a total of 3,200,000 times um, in one night. Now, that was just from the first night that they heard to the next. And so this was more recent than the whole marijuana thing, which has been ongoing. This was last or two months ago in September, and this was like mid-September. So right now, he hasn't quite paid off his entire IRS tax debt, but I know that um, I did the math, and one stream on Spotify is about $120 per artist. So each stream has really been adding up, but even with $120,000 per, I mean, like per artist, it still hasn't quite paid off completely. And this is really important to me. You may be wondering, well, AJ, how does that even fit into your study of law? It shows that, I mean, there are loopholes in the system. Um, it shows the big concept of not marijuana. <laughs> it shows the big concept that the legal system favors no one and everyone. Did you catch that? The legal system favors no one and everyone. You can see from this list right here, police brutality cases, Brock Turner, the rapist from Stanford, Ryan Locke, the liar from the US swim team, um, the affluenza teen, El Chapo, the Dred Scott case, and even things like the Frisco ISD tax ratification election. So you can see that this all is encompassed within the whole study of law, and I mean, Things can fall through, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing that I've picked up so far in my research is that the legal system favors nobody and everybody at the same time. And that was it. Do you guys have any questions?